Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about firing up the Detroit diesel for the first time since it's rebuilt and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Alright, where are we now? We've made the pipe for the cooling system, we've made the exhaust cooling hose, I've replaced the engine mount and we've put the oil pressure sender in. We have the oil filter done. Now, because we took the blower off, we also took the water pump off, which means we don't have full coolant and we don't have the ability to currently pressure test the cooling system until that's back. We do have oil in. I probably shouldn't have added the oil in hindsight. It would have been good actually to have tested whether any of the coolant's ending up in the sump before adding the oil, but bad luck, we did it. Uh, starter motor's connected but not actually wired up currently. This is the bolt hole I can't get the bolt started in, so I'm just going to have a look, see how deep it is. It's a little bit deeper than the bolt we've got, but let's have a look inside with this uh, rear endoscope. If we look down in this bolt hole, yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of healthy thread. But I am also seeing quite a bit of uh, silicon that's oozed out. So I might get a uh, pick in there and see if I can scrape some of that out. Unfortunately, I can't rig up anything long enough now to get my thread repair tool in there. Anyway, we'll see what happens if we scrape a bit of that out. Our options for getting to this is either take the whole bell housing off or, as I think it was uh, New Jersey Bill again suggested, that um, we could actually just take the cylinder head off and then get to it from that side. I don't do either of those things, but we might have to. While we're waiting for Adrian to turn up, I'll just pop off one of the airbox covers so we can have a look, because that was a question that came from last week's video. The airbox really is just a space inside the block around the base of all the pistons. So here you can see there's cylinder number one at the back there, you can see the rings on it. Cylinder number two, number three around there maybe. You can even see right through light at the other side, which is where the blower is going to go on. So it really is just one big cavity all around the, uh, you know, around the cylinders that gets pressurised by the blower. Then down on the bottom of the block here, is the drain that drains any oil that blows by into the airbox. So we'll attach a hose there and go to a catch can. While we're here too, something else we talked about last week was that we've got the injector. So this is a fuel line coming in and out of the injector, or vice versa, in and out. Um, and this middle lobe on the cam pushes on the injector and fires that. The outside one here opens two exhaust valves. The outside here opens the other two. So four exhaust valves, one injector in the middle. This little rod here goes into the injector, in and out, and that affects how much fuel the injector delivers with each push of the camshaft. The camshaft pushes the same amount every time because that's how much lift the lobe has, but this rod determines how much fuel gets delivered. Also, given we're getting ready to uh, pop this motor back in the boat, there were two blanked off bolt holes here, half inch coarse thread, I think they were. So I bought two lifting eyes here and here to help carry some of the weight at the front. There's a single big one at the back and we'll have two smaller ones at the front. Another thing that Adrian noticed is that the drive plate for the Jabsco has two bolts that aren't the correct type. The correct type are the top and the right and they have a thicker shank on them to take the lateral load. On the right hand side we're going to be adding another drive plate for an air compressor because I'm going to use that instead of the on deck air compressor at the moment to save some space. When Adrian arrived he put the blower back on that he had rebuilt. Now Adrian really kindly filmed quite a lot of the work he did in his workshop so I'm going to get to work after this video and start editing up his footage so you can see a lot of the rebuild he did on the governor, the fuel pump and the blower. But for now, he's got it back on and we got working on a few other things.
Adrian also noticed that the machine surface on some of the rocker supports were facing the wrong way, so I set about reversing those while he started getting the fuel system plumbed in. Yeah, am I going to have to let off the other side yeah, too? Yeah, you will, to... yeah. You'll have to get both off, yeah. There's no, there's no shortcut, sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. Some of these might, would have originally had steel lines. Okay, yeah. Line. No, but... So it's all pretty low pressure though, isn't it? Yeah, that's only 60 PSI. Yeah. And then the, the, your, your thousands of PSI are in, created in the injector. In the injector. So you could probably even just go um, barbs, couldn't you, and hose clamps or not? Oh, really? And so then when it failed, the, because the middle the number three is not well supported, they crack. Yeah. And got a rumble up coming up. Right. We can put water in it too now. So yeah, cool. Yeah. That's right. That's few loads of on. So I've only got to get that one fit into there. You can get the hard fuel lines that go to the injectors off with a regular spanner and back on, but the special kind of service tool socket allows you to do them up with a torque wrench. They only take about 15 pounds, you know, so they're pretty light. And if they get over tightened, it's very easy to squash the flared end quite thin. So, yeah, make sure you don't over tighten these if you don't have the torque wrench. Next up, Adrian started running the rack, which involves adjusting the two screws to get the perfect tension on the control rods that change how much fuel each injector puts into the cylinder. So if you watch, if you actually watch the side of the rack down here, you probably come around behind me. You know, if you watch that rack arm there, yep. as it comes in tight, it'll pop up. Oh, it's not going to do it for me. Usually twist. Oh, yeah, there. So yeah. twist just, just, yeah. just sort of twist there. Yep. So that's, you know, you've got it sort of tight there. Yep. So there's just tension on it. Yep, just tension on it. Then you've sort of got to, and take, you'll probably take a bit of tension off with this screw, so it'll come loose. Ah, uh, come back again, yep. Still got tension on it, so that's all right. Oh, oh so you're just seeing, by tapping it, you're just seeing if it's flopping around. Around, yeah. Screw there, and it's not pulling it back. Why? Yeah, okay, that's what you're saying. Mm. So at some point, that should have it that should flopping have... around again. Well, yeah, that's not. So, unless. <sighs> a bit of a sticky. Yeah, now the tube looks alright. It's just. I think we've got an issue somewhere else. That's. Because it, usually it's about, oh, they're pretty short screws to be honest in that. Okay. But um, normally they're sitting higher than yeah, not and right out. <coughs> and the rack just seems to be. I'll just, I'll you want to do that? Yeah, yep. just get you to pull that around again. So this is pulling the rack to fuel, full, full fuel. fuel. Yep. So full throttle. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, I've got a feeling that maybe someone at some point has changed this rack because the screws aren't long enough to reach the back of it. Yeah, to right. Set it the adjustment. So there's different arms. Okay. With or with offsets on them. Oh, okay. And that'll then give you bring the rack around this way a little yeah, bit. Yeah, gotcha. So it's a mis mismatch that it parts almost. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, well, you'll get full fuel, but you just don't have the locking screw to um, yeah, gotcha. retain it properly. So. so can we set it and then just get longer screws? I can go and get... Yeah, we'll just need to get four longer ones. Four for the longer back, ones, yeah. the back, yeah. Or we'll sort of really need the two to set it because you're locking it up and you want to feel yeah, it. Yeah, right, to do it properly. So, yeah. Well, I can just get the four for tomorrow. If that's... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. All right. and then, okay, uh... done. While we were waiting to pick up these other little bits and pieces, namely those longer bolts to uh, dial the rack in properly, I did a pressure test on the cooling system. So just put the adapter in, 
pumped it up to 10 psi then 15 after that and just started having a look around for leaks found a couple of little ones namely some bolts that didn't have enough sealant on them that went into the uh, heat exchanger and the oil coolers so just took those out again put some extra sealant on them put them back in and now they're all bone dry I also moved the dipstick out from behind the blower, so now it's going to be even easier to check the oil again. It's also right next to the filler, so they're paired together. <laughs> next day, Adrian returns with the longer screws we needed to get the injectors adjusted properly. So here is the adjustment, this hole here. Is this the buffering screw? That's the buffer screw, buffer yeah. Screw? Yeah. So I won't do that till it's run. Yep. Oh, okay, yep. So you're just looking for any sort of like load, preload on like a tension on yeah, it? Yeah, they'll see how they spring them back. Yep, yep. And that's what you're looking for? Yeah. So you move the front one until it was dragging on it. Yeah. And then, and then, then do the back one, yeah. yeah. And just work your way along. Yep. Okay. This is just the idle screw. So yep. screw in to increase the idle. Increase idle, idle. yep. Idle RPM. So to increase the maximum RPM, we have to shim the spring inside the housing. Okay. So we need to check. Run the engine up to full RPM and check what we've got, and then we'll work out how many shims we need to apply. So, okay. three, three thou is, is one RPM. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. And, um, yeah, right. And you're just backing it off for the first startup, though? Start up, yeah. Okay, cool. Just to make sure. Yep. Not going to run away unless we'll do something funny. Nice. Not that it will run away, but yeah. Yeah. Put it straight up. What do you reckon, Dylan? Put it straight up for the extra um, high points. Could you? Points. I don't think this is torque to spec, but it's close. close that's, it. <laughs> that's what matters. It'll hold, it'll do the drop. Just do it. So what do we got, Adrian? We got uh, a bit of leaking cooler, or is that when I filled it up? Maybe when I filled it up. Filled it up. Oil. Ready to, um, fuel. Jump so and make it crank better. it a bit and just see if we get oil. Uh, oh, just fuel. We'll fuel it and fire and what's in the injectors and yeah. At this point, we were pretty much ready to try and start it. So. I'm normally pretty brutal with the editing to try and keep the videos a bit shorter and succinct, but I figure I just leave this whole section unedited, so it's sort of a bit more like being there, I guess. So, here we go. So, jumper leads. Oh, in case it was really loud, I got myself some earmuffs. <laughs> Quality. <coughs> What'd you say? Quality. I hope you keep those on the boat. Ah, oh, return line probably needs a boost plant. No, these are things. No, no, the earmuffs. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. We'll just see what it does. It might, might only oh, wiggle a little bit. It might, it might not leak. Trust me, you're not going to sit there. It's not tight at all. Oh, come on. No, it's not. I do have a... Come on. Little fire bolts. You're not going to want to sit there. <laughs> um, I do have loads of hose clamps. I do. There's a cable tie on this, isn't there? Yeah. Cable tie. Yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, where's that ratchet? Uh, my quarter inch ratchet's got a 7mm socket or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How about the screwdriver? Yeah. That'll probably survive. Old school. Alright, uh, so I might disconnect that and then just go on to the... How to jumpstart your Detroit. Yes. <clears throat> Do we need a phone book for the uh, air intake? Oh, if you're worried, dear. Yeah. What kind of phone book? White or yellow? Does it matter? Um, <laughs> pink if we can. Pink, pink pages. Pink, 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 pink. The B. How about I think the best thing is probably the uh, the Detroit tool set. It'll pop it there if you're really worried. <laughs> it comes in the end. It has more uses than what it you know, first had. The starter motor doesn't actually work. So have you got a short wire there for the starter motor to activate? Oh right, yeah. Oh, I was going to bring my remote starter thing. That's what I was going to bring me, I remember. Um, uh, so... Oh, what is it? Let's under here. Under there, that one down there. Yeah, okay. And I'll terminal and a bit of wire and just short it onto the bolt. 
All I could, uh, yeah. I was so going to bring my remote starter. That way you won't burn the end of the thread. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally forgot to bring it. It's annoying. Have you got any eyelets, Dean? And a bit of water? No, but there's an electrical kit up there and they're worth. Electrical oh, clean, clean That's the ticket. Oh, 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 beer. Don't spill the beer for Christ's sake. It's probably a bit big. That one's a bit. Are any really blue ones? Uh, There's a blue one. A loop. One of those. Mm -hmm. you want wire too, yeah? a piece of wire, probably only, you know, fix the radius long. 125 Yes, I'm gonna uh, Adrian's gonna buy them and take them off the price of the bill. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's taking that whole box. Why? Why did you get those? Did you just get the wrong size? Stand their standards, and it turns out this is already been machined. That's what I did. Yeah, I'm gonna take it and use it. Yeah, I just did that. Actually, because they're sleeves, I always thought they wore when yeah. you put your sleeves in. Yeah. But apparently because they vibrated with the block wears as well. And yeah. I actually wish in some ways when I called you, so I would have said, you've got, oh, are you sure you're standards? I would have gone, you know, normally parts guys are pretty good like that. I'm just filming a random... Just filming random things now. I'm just filming random things now. Yeah, but I'm just filming random things now. 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 Dog fight. Yeah, yeah, I was. Close up, get some real action. Yeah, I know, we need, we need someone to do a three count. Who's got the bell? You can be like that guy from Murph Exposure. Get to the RTL film. Trust me, you're not going to win either. Yeah. Oh, a little bit, but if I put the nut back on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the professional yeah. approved method. Apparently so for the most lot of electricians. Mm. I, I was going to start that as a job. Yeah, you're I've, keen on I've been stuff, I've been doing it for long enough, just on my own cars and on my mates' cars, and it's a lot of mass. my girlfriend enjoys having a fifteen hundred watt subwoofer. So I was going to say something else then, but I just thought I'd better pick one. 1500 watt. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward pause. <laughs> pause. I'll <laughs> see some video this morning. Someone's about to get the shock of a lifetime. <laughs> so you don't shoot up. that. <laughs> get a shot, get a close up. The, the, mothers come, the mothers come and pick the son up, and here's the two kids having a sword fight. But You're not going to want to be there, mate. They're in the kids' house, and they've been the other mothers. Here, okay, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what are you. Okey doke. Ow, ow. So, done. I'm going to for copyright reasons. Done. Just give it a test, just like clunk, so it, see if it actually works. Yeah. yeah. It lives. Huh? Get rid of this cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> to the, the moment of uh, reckoning. Yes, exactly. Oh, I'll get us a Cooper's <laughs> will you do it? <laughs> All afterwards. <laughs> what do you mean afterwards? You can't have a beer until it starts. Yeah. <laughs> Celebratory. Crank it a bit? Jack the leak. Well, we should may as well change the uh, pipe at the same time. I might have missed it on the talking. Uh, yeah. Missed it. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, let's tighten it. Yeah, on this dish up in here, and then where you can run it. Yeah. Um, three o'clock. Okay. It's all right. So far, so good. 
<laughs> We've caused unnecessary dog stress. Yeah, he's poor old Alan. So happy. Loudest thing you've ever heard. It's like you hear it when it actually goes in the motorbike. Yeah. We're going to put the seat. So why do they mark faults with white paint as a talking stuff? Exactly. Right, I'll go and get the beer. Oh, Tighten up. Tighten up. Yeah. Oh. Come here, Harlow. Yeah. Come on, Hey Dean, can we borrow your workshop? Okay. Sure, that'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, but at least you can now rest easier to start. Yeah, it's hard to start. Yeah, look, you start. It makes nothing, doesn't it? It's just a kick, yeah. yeah. It's easy to start when you start a motor as the size of uh, the engine that runs a Prius. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the solenoid is the size of the output starter motors. Yeah, yeah. It does sound good. I don't want to do close pop anymore. So what's the next step, Adrian? Just setting the injector height. Oh, okay, yep. So, it's, which is one inch 460 thou for this, for this injector in this application. Mm -hmm. um, so you just want the, basically want the tool to wipe the oil off. Just yeah. wipe it off the top of the, um, you can see it's just leaving a mark there yeah. in the oil on the- Top of the spring top keeper of the, or whatever the, um, yeah. Injector follower. Right, yep. And, um, when you do the nut up, you'll actually it will lift up just a touch, takes the slop out of the thread. So uh, okay, yep. It can be a little bit of fluffing around just to Backwards get it right. Backwards and forwards to get yeah. it. Yeah. Usually not too much drama. Yeah. That's that's just dragging a little bit yep. tighter now, which uh, is okay. good. That's what we want. Can I have a little feel of that just to? Yep. Yeah, yeah right. Just, just feel very it gently touching it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So you set them with valves down, set the injector. Oh, okay. Injector down, set the valves. Yep. Pretty, pretty straightforward, so yeah. Nice. <laughs> It was amazing. Once uh, Adrian worked his magic and got all the injector height set, had them dialed in, all that smoke we initially had just disappeared completely. It goes to show how you can see this smoke old motor think it's unhealthy, but really it just needs a tune up. By the time he'd done that, it was incredibly, uh, you know, smoke free. Next up, uh, Adrian put a little bit of reflective tape on the uh, crank pulley so that he could use his optical taco to see what our idle RPM was and what our maximum uh, full throttle no load RPM was. Once the idle RPM was set right, Adrian installed the buffer screw 
and then adjusted that until the sort of hunting, the fluctuation in the RPMs is out, so you don't sort of have the, the governor bouncing around a point. And then after that, we were pretty much done. It was ready to go. Of course, one little uh, gearbox test was in order too before we get this thing back in the boat. So success. Big thanks to Adrian for all his hard work and his expertise in getting this up and running. Uh, big thanks to CDA for doing a great job on the block itself. Also huge thanks to all the Dengue Marine patrons. Without your support by, you know, contributing on Patreon, there's no way I could have afforded to get this engine rebuilt like this. So thank you so much for your help in making this a reality. Of course, what also helps fund this whole rebuild is people buying t-shirts and whatever. So thank you very much to those people as well. And on that note, Teesprings just sent me an email saying they're having uh, a sale at the moment. So if you put in Santa as a promo code, you get five or ten percent off, ten percent I think. Um, and they actually cover that ten percent, so it doesn't really eat into my profit at all. So I know it's too late for Christmas presents this year, but if you are looking to buy something anyway, then now's a great time. Type in the Santa promo code and you get the discount. Ah, almost forgot. So also huge thanks to David from Cutting Edges for helping me get all the parts I needed. Often I had very vague descriptions and David always came through finding me yeah, the right part and they were always at a great price. So thank you David for that. So now we have a working engine and a pretty good hull. All we do now is put the two together. To make that happen I'm now madly going to start working on the engine mounts. I've already started but I'm going to finish them off. They're actually only about a day's work so it won't be a big deal. Anyway, so a few more videos on some deck repairs I've already done, some videos on the engine mounts, some videos on Adrian's work in his workshop and another little surprise for Christmas. So I'll catch you then. See ya. Jesus, we, a, we built a 471 for, I think I don't know if I told you. Anyway, he took it away and he never wanted to wear the engine out. He wanted it to last forever. So yeah. every service, he didn't, within six months he was back. Or within 12 months he was back. The engine was smoking. Anyway, fucking oil in it was pristine. Yeah, Absolutely right. beautifully clean. What's wrong with this? It hasn't bedded in, there's something not going on here. Anyway, so he goes, yeah, yeah, every time I service it, I fill it with kerosene and start it up, run it, and then put the clean oil in. Well, there's your problem, mate. The kerosene just cut the shit out of everything. Wow. Trying to do the right thing, killed it with care. Yeah, it's like no, nah, just keep changing the oil. Yeah, and let the oil done. If the oil turns black, that's okay. You yeah. need to have that. It needs to get dirty yeah. for it to work. Okay, that's interesting. Um, because uh, the particles are there to build up for a certain amount of time, and it keeps its viscosity. If you just keep changing, it actually doesn't get any dirt to build up and get the rings uh, to bed okay. in. And give yeah, it, give gotcha. it some abrasiveness to bed in. To bed in, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Makes sense. Yeah.